In this video, I interview Jordan Harbinger, who's interviewed over 700 people and has over 200 million podcast downloads. And we talk about his tips for how to do better interviews, his advice for leveling up your content, and his tips for body language so you can crush your on-camera presence, coming up. This video is brought to you by LearnVideo.Live, a free one-hour online training on how to grow a highly influential and profitable YouTube channel this year. To get free access, just go to LearnVideo.Live. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Video Influencers. Help you build your influence income and impact with online video. And I'm super pumped to be standing here today with Jordan Harbinger. How's it going? Good, man. Thanks for the opportunity. Pumped to have you on the show. We're here at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego, and we're gonna be talking about how to level up your content and really actually with some body language things and also how to interview people better. Jordan's done over 700 interviews. He's actually had one of the longest running interview shows over a decade and over 200 million downloads on his podcast, so he knows a lot, and I'm pumped to be learning from you today. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, man. There's a lot of stuff I've learned through mistakes, yeah. and I would love to share a lot of those mistakes. I'm pumped. Well, let's talk about content first sure. because, you know, we've all heard the phrase content is king. Yes. Uh, you're a content creator yourself, but you know, not all content is created equal. Not every interview sh inter show is created equal. That's true. And you've learned a lot about content. I was even listening to your show recently, which is great. And we'll talk about that later. Um, but you were talking about like also how much effort you put into it. So break down some of the things you think that makes great standout content. Sure. So when I first started interviewing, I thought, you know, I'm totally fake taking my way through this, I'm entertaining a little bit, I feel like I'm kind of smart so I can wing it and I'm doing a really good job winging it. But one time years ago, I read the book for the guest and then I read another one of his books and I thought, this is a really good writer, I'm really enjoying this. So I did an interview with him and he said, wow, this is one of the best interviews that I've done in years why did this take so long? And the answer truthfully was, well, I didn't feel like I could do a good interview because I never read any of your stuff. I didn't tell him that. But then I said, I, I thought, look, if I read all of the books and I go through the Wikipedia and I research the guests and I go through their bio and then I look at other interviews that they've done, I can do a better interview than anyone else has done because wow. I outworked them. Because I used to think, oh, it's talent, you know, it's just working hard, you gotta be funny or entertaining. No, you can outwork people and then you can create something better. The problem is most of us, we don't really want to outwork people. We just kind of want to put more content out there, yeah. see what sticks to the wall, and then rinse and repeat until we are internet famous. That's powerful. So you just thought like, I'm gonna put more work into it. I'm not yeah. just gonna wing this. I'm gonna yeah. do my research, I'm gonna go deep. Well, that's awesome, but let's actually take a step back sure. because I wanna get your tips on interviews, but how did this whole thing start for you? What kind of was your story of getting in, in interviews and even getting to where you are today? Yeah, so I used to be an attorney and that was as exciting as it sounds. And I knew that I wasn't speaking about working people. I knew I wasn't the smartest guy at that law firm. I was trying to outwork people, but now I'm at Wall Street on a, at a law firm. Everyone's working 20 hours a day. I'm not outworking these people. I'm not gonna make myself smarter fast enough for my career to take off. And then I thought, wait a minute. If I don't have a competitive advantage, probably gonna get fired. And so I wanted to work from home because I thought if I work from home, they won't know that I don't belong here. Yeah. So one of the partners was never in the office and I thought, okay, I'm gonna ask this guy how he got to work from home because he's never in the office. So I cornered him one day and I was like, hey Dave, how come you're never in the office? You know, do you just work from home a lot? Thinking I'm gonna get the secret phrase you tell the rest of the partners so that you don't have to come to the office. And he goes, no, I'm bringing in deals, I'm creating relationships. And then I thought, well, if I can learn to do that, I'll have a new competitive advantage. So I decided to go out and practice body language and psychology and all these books that I was reading on networking. Yeah. And I started working on that stuff. And I started teaching other people that stuff because they were interested. And then I was burning CDs. This is how old this was. Burning CDs, putting them in my pocket. And when someone would go, hey, how come you seem to know everybody at this bar? How come you got this offer for this cool thing? I would whip out one of my fancy burned CDs and hand it to them. And then one time a friend of mine goes, why don't you just put this up as a podcast? I heard this new thing about podcasting, you should try it. Yeah. And I, I went to the iTunes store and there were 800 shows in there and I went, 800 shows, no one's ever gonna find this. Right. So I uploaded the first episode of the podcast, really enjoyed it, started interviewing people out of laziness. I was creating my own content and then I went, oh, this is hard. Maybe if I interview somebody, 
they'll do the work and I can just sit there and nod and go, yeah, cool, all right, amazing, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and so I started doing that and I did that for years and people were like, this is really interesting content and I realized I was the weakest link mm. because I was good at finding guests but I wasn't really doing anything special and the competition was heating up with more wow. and more shows. So I started to outwork and work harder because that was the only thing I knew how to do. I don't know how to get smarter that much faster than the normal pace, but I do know how to outwork people. And I figured if that's my competitive advantage, along with the relationships that I'm creating, then I can put that and do a really good show. And that's what I've been doing for the last 12 years, 11 years. Man, that's so po powerful. And and as podcasting with the Art of Char Charm and now the Jordan Harbinger show, you've interviewed over 700 people. Yes. Let's talk about how to do an interview show. Obviously, we're doing one right now. Yeah. This is kind of meta. You're nailing uh, it. But yeah. we, uh, there's many people in our community that should be interviewing guests, maybe already have interview shows. What are some of the lessons that you've learned and maybe some of the biggest mistakes that people yes. make when it comes to interviews? So first things first, like I said, it took me five or six years to realize that I should know the guests work never as well as they do, but damn close, right? Yeah. Read the freaking book. You know, I know that sounds really simple, but people are lazy. They won't do that. But here's the upside. You don't have to have a PhD in whatever they're teaching. You just have to know it well enough to have an intelligent conversation with them. That will make you already better than 95% of other content creators out there. Then once you read that, I've got a couple tricks that I'll, I'll let you all in on, on how to get some inside info on a guest. So I go to Wikipedia, obviously Wikipedia, wealth of knowledge, that's not what I mean. Go to the talk page, you know what a talk page is on I Wikipedia? Actually, so. so on Wikipedia there's the article, right, where it's like, oh, Jordan Harbinger, he's a lawyer, now he does a show, nobody cares, it's like a two little bio. There's a talk page, which is where the super geeky Wikipedia people yell at each other about what goes in the article. And it's kind of all undercover, and they're like, delete this, no, I heard this happen, and where's the proof? Oh, there isn't any. Another guy's like, I was there, it did happen. It's not in the article, but you can get these little bits of data that are just nowhere else. Yeah, and that's w awesome. When you're reading the book and, and things like that, if you can go into the social media and look for the people they thanked, Search for the people they thanked and then search for that person's name together and often you'll find some ancient video on like Metacrawler or whatever, if that sure. even still exists, sure. where it's like Gary Vaynerchuk and he's like 28 and he's being mentored by some other random person. No one has that bit of data. You can write down what's in there and you can bring that up and once you trigger a nostalgia in the guest, they're going to be blown away. They're going to want to open up, talk about it because they want to relive those emotions and they're doing it with you on your program, nobody's gonna dig that deep. So if you can out-prepare 90, 95% of the people, you're gonna do a much, much better job. That's so powerful and very tactical, so thank you yeah. for sharing that. Speak to some of the mistakes. You have done 700 interviews. Those first couple, you were mentioning some things. You put yeah. a lot of work in, but what are some other things maybe, who knows, interrupting? I mean, what do people do that, or what are some of the mistakes that you make that you yeah. hear in other interviews maybe it just irks you too? Yeah, so early on in the interview game, I wasn't trying to do any sort of internet business. Try I wasn't trying to be like, internet celebrity Jordan Harbinger, right? I didn't care. So the interviews are okay. I was a beginner, but they were okay. But then I went, oh, I need to brand myself. You know, I need to brand myself as an expert. So instead of creating my own content, which is what you're supposed to freaking do if you want to brand yourself as an expert, what I was doing was going, oh, that's interesting, Sean. Let me talk about myself for like 20 minutes in the middle of this interview. And I started getting feedback from listeners that went, Jordan, you're here every week. We hear you. Let the guests talk. Wow. That's why they're there. And at first, my ego resisted that. And I was like, it's my show. I'm going to talk about whatever I want. And if that subject is me, then so be it. And then you see people go, cool, I'm going to go somewhere else where the guest gets to talk. That's a hard lesson to learn. So a few years of doing that, or a few months of doing that, if you're smarter than me, which many people are, should teach you that lesson. But later on, when you realize, look, I am here every week, if I'm going to throw in an anecdote, make it good for the audience. So my rubric or measure now is I'm an advocate for the audience. I'm not trying to be friends with the guests. I'm not trying to get them to like me. I'm not trying to make myself look good. That will either happen over time or it won't. But if you advocate for the guest, you are their eyes, their ears, you're asking the questions for them, you're making sure they get value, practical exercises, et cetera, which is I want practicals in every episode, takeaways they can use. If you're thinking about that, you'll do a good interview. If you're thinking about how to look good or be cool or be friends with the guest, you're gonna blow it because you're gonna be thinking about what's good for you or what's good for the guest instead of what's good for the audience. Whew. 
some fire tips right there. After doing all these interviews, especially as it relates to, you know, especially building your influence and persuasion and charm and things like that, one of the things that uh, our audience is doing, of course, is on video. And yes. they're trying to come across, of course, persuasively. They want to have confidence. They want to project, you know, uh, the presence they want to deliver. But when you get in front of a camera, it's intimidating. Of course. What are some of your tips when it comes to body language and, and really having authority and just being yourself, but being your best self on camera? Yeah, so this took me a long time to learn. And in fact, even still, when I get a new mic, I'm always like, oh, hello there, <laughs> right? So it, the nerves do creep in and that's gonna happen. That's gonna be normal for you. Yeah. Unless you are an expert video personality, you're gonna have these issues. Whether or not you're on just audio or even video, so what I like to do is give people the following drill. This is called uh, the doorway drill. Okay. And the reason this is powerful is because if I'm trying to micromanage my body language, I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta look, gotta look relaxed right now. Everybody relax. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Good point, yeah. Does not work. So you have to relegate and delegate your body language to this sort of subconscious level so it happens automatically. Because otherwise you go, all right, I look good, I'm standing up straight, I look confident, and then you go to a networking event or something like that, and then suddenly you just go back into computer all day mode, and that's a problem. You can't micromanage your body language, it just doesn't work. Yeah. It's really hard to monitor that and also be present in a conversation. So, every time you walk through a doorway, in your own house, in your office, whatever you do the most, straighten up, so shoulders back, chin up, chest up. I mean, you're already doing it. You're okay. good, you're all good, right? right? Okay. And you don't have to do this. Don't do the sure, Superman, sure. you'll look like a weirdo. Just, just stand up straight. Exactly. Get, get the hunch back up. Get the hunch back and, chin, and put a smile on your face. It always helps. Yeah. Um, it'll look a little plastic at first, but you'll get used to it as it becomes your default. Now, the problem is, I can tell you to do that every time you walk through a doorway, and then you're gonna walk through a doorway in two seconds and forget all about it, and you're never gonna build the habit. So get those little post-it notes, the tiny ones, yeah. the green ones or the purple ones, or whatever, you don't have to write anything on them. Put them up at eye level in the door frame, at home, at work, in the office. What that'll do is it'll pattern interrupt you. So when you walk through the doorway, you go, why is there a, oh, right, there's a post-it yeah, note there. Gotta, yeah. Oh, okay, right, it's there because I need to straighten up. So every time you walk through the doorway, you're, you're building that subconscious habit. And then when you do walk into Starbucks, your next meeting, the boardroom, some networking event, you your body language by default is upright, positive, and confident. And then you don't have to think about it. Now, mm. not only does that help you become a little bit more confident, it causes other people to treat you in a different way than they would normally. So if people are treating you in a different way, that informs how you think about yourself, which of course is a virtuous cycle that lets you relax a little bit more, be more positive, open, and confident, and then it's constantly reinforcing. And eventually you can tear the post-it notes down because you've essentially had a core identity level shift. Complete change. From freaking post-it notes, man. That's super yeah. powerful. And then of course, that's gonna change your presence on camera. That could definitely move the needle. Man, that's yeah. a great tip. Well, Jordan, are you ready for the lightning round? I am. Choo-choo. Boom. Boom. Or slice maybe would slice have been better. That was not dice. a boom. That was not a boom motion. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Cat or dog? Cat. Uh, NYC or LA? NYC. Last song you had on repeat? Oh God, it was. Pr this is gonna be embarrassing. It was probably that. Uh, was that stupid Friday song? And I had it on repeat for a reason that nobody cares about right now. Friday, Friday, down on Friday. Down on Friday. All right. Yeah. Okay. If you could only have one item that you could grab or get in during a zombie apocalypse, what would it be? What would your go-to item or weapon be? I don't, I would say a machete. That's it. I like it up close and personal, man. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. If you look back and you think about maybe a past failure or mistake that you made that led to your future uh, success, what would that be? And do you have maybe a favorite failure? Yeah, so I, when I started The Art of Charm a long time ago, I let people get away with little things that I thought, oh, eventually we'll fix this because we'll make more money or we'll improve this or we'll work this out together. But instead of handling the problem in the moment, I just kind of pushed it off and thought, later this will be something we can fix. Mm. And those rifts grew so big that eventually it was kind of like, you leave the cap off the toothpaste and somebody's getting stabbed. Handle problems early, make sure that you nip them in the bud because they will get worse. Money's not gonna fix it. A bigger presence, a bigger audience is not gonna fix it. Scaling up is not gonna fix it. Handle it early. One of the reasons I split from The Art of Charm and started The Jordan Harbinger Show was because all of these little problems grew for so freaking long that by the time 
the last straw broke the camel's back, there was just no way it was going to get repaired. Favorite quote or maybe a phrase that you think about often? Leave everything better than you found it. Love it. Um, no miss morning ritual. Oh, man. No miss morning ritual. I go for a walk for like an hour every morning. It gets the blood flowing. Sometimes I'll make a phone call or listen to an audiobook. And even if it's freezing, you know you're getting your 10,000 steps in and there then you, you don't feel like crap during the day. Yeah, I love that. Favorite or bingeable Netflix show that you love? Uh, shoot, Game of Thrones is not on Netflix, but it should be. There you go, that's a good one. And then finally, what is one book that you recommend every influencer watching should read? I love the, well, how to, this is cliche, but screw it. How to win friends and influence people. Look, that thing was written in like 1938. The principles are still solid. Forget all the examples are about like typewriter salesmen. Sure. Go read that book and realize that that was the beginning of people going, hey, you can learn to sort of change your personality in a way that will make you more effective. And when you get to the root of that, there's very little that's been iterated upon since then in a useful way. That was kind of the OG you can change yourself for the better book. And that's why, well, maybe not the OG, depending on which sort of faith you follow. Sure. But that was one of the ones that I picked. Awesome. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Uh, what do you have going on? And, well, of course, we're going to link everything up in the description yeah. below. But where can people find you and what are you up to? Sure. I'm at jordanharbinger.com, but I do the Jordan Harbinger Show. It's a podcast that I am growing out of 11 years of experience. I interview everybody from CIA agents to teach you how to read people, body language, etc., all the way to persuasion from hostage negotiators, Larry King type talk show hosts, and a little bit of a deep dive into how I'm recovering from a business split that I never thought I'd go through. So there's a lot of really brutal honesty that includes insight, and I think that the, hopefully that's really useful for people, especially in this line of work. Absolutely, and actually I'm a listener myself, so I highly recommend the show. Definitely uh, jump on iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts, and subscribe, because I believe, you know, we want to help you build your influence here on this channel, and that is a great show to check out. Jordan, um, let's, you know, as an entrepreneur, you've definitely been up, you've gone through yeah. some ups and downs, you're mentioning even currently, that's just the reality for any of us, whether yeah. we're just starting, there's those times when we grind and this stuff is hard it like, is hard and it can be discouraging can you just share some final maybe encouragement for our community and any parting wisdom for those that are influencers and entrepreneurs to just keep going definitely so when we look at other people doing their thing on the internet like you me whatever one of the reasons I think that recent episodes of the Jordan Harbinger show were powerful was because I shared a lot of mistakes and failures and not in the way where it's like oh 10 years ago I made this little mistake and now I'm rich and famous no that's that's not what I'm doing I'm doing it in real time and the reason that that's worked out really well is because I think that we often compare our blooper reel personally to other people's highlight reel. Mm -hmm. It's easy to go, oh, this person on Instagram, they're doing all this cool stuff. I'm never going to get there. But what you don't see is they had the flu last week. They blew their latest product launch. They're not talking about that because it's not good for business. Mm. So when you look at other people's businesses, realize you're getting a curated feed. And I know that we know this consciously, but we got to realize your blooper reel, what's going on up here most of the time, do not compare that to what other people are putting out there as a business advertisement. And when you realize that everybody has a blooper reel, you're going to start to feel a little bit better about actually making mistakes and having real failures that you will later learn from. I love that, my man. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you. Influencer, subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you want to check out another video in our social media series, just click or tap the screen over there or another video from Video Influencers. Until next time, remember, on this channel, we're helping you build your influence, income, and impact with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.